Welcome back, guys. We are just about ready to head on into the second best of three of the day. It is going to be Sprout taking on Nort. And this is another matchup that I'm very excited for. We, of course, just had Windigo against Ents. It was uh, a bit surprising. We had Windigo, of course, coming out with a 2-0 victory, which we did not expect. And now coming into this one, Mitch, we have an another matchup that on paper should be pretty close. Yeah, absolutely, it should. I uh, didn't really expect that Windigo result. Let's see if we can get a little bit of an upset here. Is it Sprout and North? North being the favorite team coming into this. They've been struggling a little bit recently. And Sprout, we saw them struggle, though, right? Over a yeah. Bucharest game and week, they didn't have a great performance. Some of that you can kind of weigh down towards uh, the bottom of the scoreboard. You know, Favin himself came out on Twitter. He was saying that he was having a really bad performance over there on the Sprout side, that uh, he was going to practice for this event, and he was going to show up and never perform that poorly again. So we're expecting fire to, a fire to be lit under Sprout as they look to take down North. And we saw already the underdog researching their opponent and taking mm -hmm. them down. So this could be interesting uh, coming into this series. Yeah, I definitely agree. I, I think the, the map veto is something that should be a pretty solid matchup between these two teams as well, because they do tend to, ser uh, to share a pretty similar map pool overall. I, I guess some there is, of course, a few differences, but they share, for example, the same instant ban pretty much. Both teams not really being massive fans of overpass. Yeah. But I think the main thing here is that both teams lately, they have been struggling, as you said. For Sprout, it was back at Bucharest Gaming Week. And then we've seen Nort just overall since making those roster changes, having brought in KD and Engade. They haven't been playing all that amazing. Sure, they've had some good performances, but they've also had some very low lows. Yeah, I think one of the things coming into this veto is the fact that, you know, North don't really play overpass much, yeah. but they do play it, as opposed to Sprout who instant ban it every time. And so if you, <clears throat> excuse me, if you take a look at the veto, Sprout took overpass out straight away. So that puts North in a position where they can go, okay, well, we've got, uh, we've got six maps here. We're comfortable on all of them. I wonder we not really want to play against these guys. And they, they choose to take Mirage. Not that surprising. It's a decent map for Sprout. They usually perform pretty well on it. And it's one of the bottom maps for North. You know, it's their second worst after Overpass. Yeah. So coming into the veto, of course, it's going to be Nuke chosen by Sprout, Inferno by North, and Cash as the decider. With the exception of Cash, I feel like that veto is as good as it could have gotten for North. Of course, they don't play Cash as much as the other maps. Only three plays in the last three months. Uh, but they've got 100% win rate on those up against strong teams. So, Yeah, but also, it's not a map that we see Sprout playing a lot. Sure, they, they play it a little bit more than you would say North do, but they don't have a great record on it, and it's not against the greatest of teams as well. Yeah, so. I think they've played it five times and won two of them. So, Something along those lines. Yeah, yeah. so I, although it's not the best technically for North, just looking at their statistics, mm. compared to Sprout, it's looking good. Yeah, I, I think coming into this series, just having a look at the way the map video did go, of course, it's Nuke, Inferno, and Cash. I, I feel like for Sprout, if they want a chance to actually take this series, they would have to be looking towards that 2-0. Yeah, I would. I definitely agree. I don't think Cash is going to be a map that they thrive on against North yeah. individually, uh, you know, head to head. It's going to be North to probably take that on a on an individual level. Uh, so bringing it over to Cash, where you know Sprout suffer anyways. It's a map that they're not great on. I, it has to really be Nuke and Inferno for me. I would definitely agree. And the the problem with that is you know Inferno and Nuke not necessarily the best combination for Sprout. They're very happy with Nuke. But when you look at Inferno, that's a map where they don't generally do too well either. Um, I think Nuke is almost almost definitely uh, their best shot coming into this series. But they've also been in quite a lot of preparation. Uh, and you may guarantee that, again, it's the same situation as Windigo. This is going to be a situation where they've come in, they've looked at the opponents they're going to be against, have been known for a while, and they're going to say, like, we need to counter-strat those guys. Mm -hmm. They're the underdogs. They're the ones that are going to be putting in a lot of work. And this is one of the biggest events they've had this year, so they're really going to want to perform here. Yeah, I, I would also imagine that at North, of course, they're going to be well prepared coming into this. It's important. It's the, the start of the major yeah. cycle, trying to get yourself towards that minor. Of course, there is eight spots up for grab. There's 16 teams competing for it. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I think this is probably by far the most competitive closed qualifier I have ever seen for a minor. Yeah, it's uh, it's certainly a competitive mini major. <laughs> it, a couple, like a year or two back, this would have been a minor itself. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's for sure. I mean, you see the level of competition just in most of these matches. It's a situation where you're not coming in just as the qualifier and going, they're gonna they're gonna win, they're gonna win, they're gonna win, 100. percent You know, mm. almost all of these matches have. I wouldn't even put it as upset potential. A great example is the Winnego game we just covered, where it was just a stomp. You know, they they walked all over ends, two to zero. Uh, the second map was 
a little bit less convincing, but still felt really, really strong for Windigo. I, I'm, I'm impressed with what we've seen from the underdog so far, and I'm really looking forward to seeing if Sprout can fix the issues that they presented over in Bucharest. Because not only was it Favon, I mean, everybody was kind of struggling over there. Against uh, against decent teams, it was uh, Vega that they were up against at the start, right? Yeah, and they were up against Vega, and I believe they got 2 0 They did indeed, and I think one of the things with that, right, is that Vega are a team that don't play uh, online a lot. Mm. So they would had, I think, about a a month to a month to a two month dry spell excuse me uh where they'd gone um they'd gone without playing too many games on hltv so it was kind of hard to figure out you know you look at their statistics last three months oh this is the map they like this is the map you don't know that anymore because they've spent a lot of time preparing so when sprout came up against them there wasn't a whole lot they could do in terms of counter strike whereas north been playing a lot they've been in the esl pro league for example that alone just offers up a plethora of information on how they like to play CS mm. on specific maps. Sprout will probably know that a map like Inferno will come out just based on Inferno being a poor map for them. So I feel like they would have they would have done the research, but certainly on Nuke, that's where they know that uh, Overpass the map they have to ban, and they know that North are probably banning um, was it Mirage? I just want to double check there. They're, they're banning Mirage afterwards because you can see the statistics if you look at their their win rates on it. It is definitely one of their weaker maps. Um, so they should know that they'll get the choice of Nuke uh, if it comes down to it. So I, I think Nuke's going to be an interesting one where we should see Sprout being able to pull something out of the bag, play against uh, North. They've got 13 recent plays on it at North. So there's lots of, lots of data out there, lots of VODs on how they play that map. And um, yeah, I'd, I'd be surprised to see Sprout getting walked over in the first map anyways. I guess one thing we should consider, though, is I believe with it being the map choice of Sprout, North should be getting the choice of side to start things off. Nuke, of course, not as one-sided as it used to be, but I'd imagine we will see them on the CT side, and that was perfect timing because we did <laughs> just get that confirmed as the game comes onto our screens. And it looks like we are ready to get into the action, guys. Already it is going to be Sprout getting their way out of that spawn. It's Percy with utility, Kevlar onto everyone else, and it looks to be a very quick play coming in towards the ramp room. It's going to be Valdo who has to try and hold it down, but he's not going to fall back off immediately, and by the time he decides to do so, so the Glocks had already closed in the distance. And the close range Glock, pretty formidable opponent as AZ just found out as Favon took him down close. Well, oh, oh, close and personal as Gade takes down Dennis now. Moving up with that USP, NATO Suffix is in the corner, takes down one, but immediately dropped. And these trades are looking good for the CTs on the retake, or at least they were until Cadian was all alone. He's got to take down two. They're not even low HP. It's going to be a difficult task to manage. And they're... Also, not on the same angle. Not, whoa, smoke. You got your pistol for that long range fight. He's going to go for the defuse inside it. Or maybe not sticking it there. Trying to, trying to take the fight, catch them off guard. Doesn't quite work out. Against the two USPs there, he probably could have afforded to have tried to stick it, in all honesty. It would have been a bit difficult. Of course, spamming with the Glock sometimes is a little bit easier, but of course, hindsight is always. Uh is always better. But um, yeah, good start from Sprout. They just took it straight to North. They showed confidence to start things off. As I said, Valde, he was in a little bit of an awkward position where he was holding such a passive angle that he didn't spot them out before they got close to him. And of course, then he wasn't really given the time to fall back off. The goal really on the ramp there is to try and find one quick headshot with the USP and then fall back down into safety and allow for your teammates to rotate into position. But that wasn't allowed, of course. Sprout now up against a force buy as we do actually see North fully invest into this round. And let's see how that's going to work out for them. The Scout, the Pistols, and an SMG in the hands of Gade. As early on, a lot of damage is actually being put in. Sprout trying to close in the distance on Secret have been actually taken down by a couple of those players who had gone ahead and combined forces. It was Gade and Valda to start things off. Nice kill, though, to be found by Gade on that UMP. Upgrades to an AK, but caught in transition, as it is going to be a two-on-two. -two. But look at this position from Gearby. Are they going to clear it out is the question. The answer is no, as the Deagle does all the damage. That's and it is going to be North winning the force buy. That's a really strong force buy for North. And that was the thing. They caught Sprout off guard. They weren't really ready for that. A lot of teams, indeed most teams, tend to go for the eco in the second round after losing the pistol. But it works out for North. As Sprout go towards outside early on, they try to go down secret and, and catch them off a mm. little bit, I suppose, expecting a couple of USPs there. Not quite working out. And now it's Sprout that are left over in the force buy territory. Deagle's in play, a CZ as well. And that's four Ds, so they're still going to be able to have that long-range fight potential. But so far, it's only the CTs that are finding the openings. Oh, Dennis gets let down solo as well. They know where he is. Will be optimal not to die to SMGs. Oh, 
Okay, that's very nice by Nato. Finds himself a quick double with the CZ. And he's closing in the distance on Valve. This could be very awkward indeed as he comes up behind him and there's a third. Nato making the big plays. Can he get the ace? Because he's going to need to if they're going to win this round. Bombs down though, unfortunately, towards T-spawn. Which means he needs to rotate all the way in there if he wants to get a bomb planted. A positive is he has a decent amount of time to do so, at least. And you can see, of course, Nark not going to be aware of that of where the bomb is actually positioned. Rather, so it gives Nato Sapic some time to go ahead and try and wrap around and retrieve that for himself. But he has to be cautious. Has to take the time, clear all of these close angles. Not sure of where Nark are currently positioned with these two remaining players. And let's see if he can get it done. AZ is, is, of course, very low on health, meaning one bullet would be enough to finish him off, likely, with that UMP. And here we go. 40 seconds now. The problem is, if he wants to try and take it towards B, he's likely going to have to run it. That would make a lot of noise. So I feel like at this point, he is pretty much forced to try and walk it out onto that A-bomb site, which I guess is a positive, because if he can actually catch Gade off guard and take him down, then suddenly he has a one-on-one -on -one against a low HP player. But let's see if that's going to be the case, because he is walking out Gade on the shotgun. It's going to be posted up, and he is going to go ahead and finish things off. And Arch do manage to success Successfully survived the force by, but it wasn't easy. Nato Safik tried to do his best to pull his team into that round, and at, le at least made it a costly one. That is something we can look towards. They drop some weapons. They make sure that we don't actually see North build up a massive economy. But Gaia did find some kills with that shotgun. He's up on six already, so he was able to build up some money for himself, and he's going to continue on with it in this round up against the full eco. You'd expect them to have an even easier time against the Kevlarless opponents. Yeah, indeed you would. It's going to be uh, easy pickings if they go towards him over on that A bomb site. Looks like Val's going to be challenged though. Up close and personal, he's resorted over to the USB and finds it onto Dennis through the smoke. Now look at oh, there's the auto shotgun making that damage work. As it's going to be a quick double with Kirby finding one to leave NATO Sapex all alone. But he's not going to be getting lonely as he's taken down by a couple of AZ's friends. 7.62s. I didn't know he'd be friends with bullets. That's weird. But yeah, 3-1. Nark been able to get a good recovery after losing that pistol initially. But this is where the guns are going to come out now for Sprout. They're going to be able to get everything they want pretty much. Bar, of course, Faven, who actually is going to be relegated down to a Galil, sadly. Not able to pull out the AK. And actually, Percy as well, I didn't notice that he was forced down. So it's definitely not perfect, but they have the utility. And let's see, this is where the preparation now can come into play. They're going to be looking once again to get that outside control. And let's see if it's going to be successful, as we do, of course, see a couple of weaker weapons being carried into this round by Nark. They haven't upgraded on all the players, but they do have the AUG alongside the AK of AZ initially to try and hold this outside push, but the kills are going to be found by Sprout. They've managed to go ahead and actually open up this A-bomb site, and suddenly it's all on the Cadian and Valde, who actually just spins up the ladder. I think he had a little bit of a mouse issue there afterwards as he ended up kind of looking down at the floor. I don't think that was his intention. Let's see if North can recover this round. I was going to say, it's Katie and Lionel outside who really could have been the man to do so. But sadly, it's not going to happen. Leaving Valda all alone to try and pull off a 1v3. He's got an M4, and they've got plenty of money, so he can go for it if he wants, but it's always best not to just throw away a weapon for the sake of it. With the bomb ticking away, he's got about 20 seconds to get in there and get the deep fuse, so he knows he's not going to be able to do that, especially not without a kit. And so just going for the save towards T-spawn, potentially an exit on offer. As he hears Dennis up on top of the roof. One more bullet's all that's needed, but luckily Dennis fell back into safety. NATO gets dropped. Dennis coming in gets <laughs> killed by the bomb. Making it costly. That, that's all he needed to do. Now only a single player surviving. Look at the, the economy over on that sprout side. Sure, Spitty and Favin do have enough to reinvest, but it's not going to give them any utility unless they go for maybe a Galil or an SMG. So it, it's, it's really not ideal. I think Favin actually did get dropped over in the end. Spitty goes for the Galil, so it's a pretty solid buy. There's not really many weaknesses to it, but they don't build up any money at all. So this is a chance here for North to just completely destroy their economy and really get themselves a hold on this on the CT side early on. Smokes towards the outside is North. Not going to be getting any, any information on whether Spread are going down secret or not. Oh, well, they wouldn't be if Kirby didn't have ears. As he hears them yeah, a little bit barreling jumping. down. Yeah, a lot of jumping going on down there. Valda's now ready for it. He knows there's players somewhere around here. Spots them, smoke goes out. Oh, maybe he didn't spot them. Now he has, though. Flashbang. Unfortunately, they're all making their way down towards the door. He's not able to spot anybody out. That double peek from Vence is going to come through. They don't peek the stairs at the same time, though. As Favin eventually trades back his teammates, they find themselves in a 2v4 with Cadian taking down Dennis. Things are not looking good right now for Sprout. 
as they try to come up the ladder. Spitty, of course, going to try to split in through the doorway as well, but he's been spotted out. It's a little bit awkward. Fabin gets a double. It's into a 1v2, spinning around and taking down the low HP opponent after the close vents. And with the bomb now planted, he has the potential to take this ace. This could actually work out for him. Gerby's waiting for Kadian to rotate in, but he's got an AWP. Not the ideal weapon for this, so instead going in with a sidearm, the P250. Gerby's trying to bait out for him so that Kadian can take the fight, catch him off guard. It's not working just yet. Holding down the side, he's so worried about heaven. Kadian comes in behind though and sends him straight to heaven. Or perhaps hell. I think I think Terra's probably gonna hell. But four to two. <laughs> four to two indeed. North going ahead and taking themselves to lead as they head upwards, as their name would indicate. <laughs> indeed, heading heading north. Technically, it's not up. There's no up or down in the universe. It's um, it's more about the positions when you're looking at north, east, west. You know, on a two-dimensional map. Yeah. But yeah, good job, Sprout. Although they do find the bomb plant in that one, I was gonna say they should have ecoed, but they actually seem to go for the full buy. I, I don't know if I like this. I, I would like to have seen them just maybe go ahead and take the eco with the AK having come out. I guess maybe Faven thinks he can get the job done, but already Gade with the shotgun able to open things up. He's been enjoying this on that A bomb site in Kadian. He doesn't even bother with the <laughs> AWP. It's just the P250 to go ahead and help shut down that A push. And the assistance, of course, of his teammates. It is gonna be a quick 5 2 lead. And with that, it was Pro they will have to go ahead and take the eco. I guess there, I think there was one or two players who were on a double eco in that previous round, so you can understand why they did go for the buy. They wanted to try and get it done while they had the economy of North in a pretty weak position, but it doesn't work out sadly. And with that, now it's going to be the full eco coming in. Five Glocks is all they have, and the chances of them really being able to get a lot done in this round is quite slim. North, they'll be aiming really to try and keep everyone alive at this point. Oh, how has Percy managed to get his way all the way over to Secret? He got lit on the cross there. A lot of damage done to him, but he makes it down. Don't think it's going to have too much impact, though. They're being picked apart right now. It's easy against non-armored opponents. They know Percy went down as well, so yeah. they'll, they'll be watching this ladder. There you go. It's even a wall bang to take him down. 6-2, to two, North starting things off well here on their CT side, but they face a challenge now as Sprout takes themselves a full by Galil on Fav and everybody else has got the AKs, lots of smokes in play. They have been liking their smokes towards outside, but so far, they ain't been working too well for them. Even when they get down into secret, things start, well, most of the time they are getting into secret actually without taking all too many hits. The problem is, they fall apart. The hold down there is just a little bit too strong right now. Oh, nice aggressive push comes in from Kirby. Gets flashed in, I believe, by one of his teammates. Not quite sure who it was, but it works out very well as they manage to drop Dennis. Already a man advantage to be found, although we do see Spitty trying to force the issue onto A. I'm not sure how Kadian died. He actually took himself down, but I don't think I don't really think it's gonna affect the round too much, luckily enough for the sake of Nart as it is gonna be the kills elsewhere going in their favor quite heavily. Not even the NATO suffix now are all that will remain to try and save the day. And with the bomb dropped in such an open position under the sight line of Valde, I don't really know if there's much that can be done. Faven, he's left all alone. He had some nice rounds so far in this game. But I think a one on four with very low health is really just a little bit too much to ask of him. I think so. He couldn't find the ace before. Got taken down by Kadian on the P250. This time, it is it is only the 4K. It's easier. But uh, not with not with 40 HP. And no bomb control as well. I don't think we've seen Nato Safix get out an op yet. And we heard just about the head in the round number 10, of course. And he won't be getting an op in round number 10. Nope, it's going to have to be an eco, that. most likely. If, if Faven could get a bomb plant here, that would be a really nice bonus. But it, it's very unlikely that he's going to be allowed to do so unless Nart makes some pretty serious mistakes. You can see the CTs holding down on ramp there. They've got that bomb control. You can see it blimping away. And there's going to be uh, pretty much no chance for uh, for Faven to have any impact in this round. The question is, is he going to actually fully save? Because they could probably go aggressive and hunt him down after time. Yeah, I think they will, because they do have a decent amount of money onto the majority of their players. It's brave to try and save in this position. Finds one, but now they know exactly where he is. They're going to be barreling towards him to take him down. I think he's going to survive, though, just about with that spray. It slows him down a bit too much. Still risky. I mean, if he gets dropped there, if they start pushing up, like, two seconds earlier, he's dead. And then he has no money. It's a double eco. Even still, he's forcing his team into a position where they kind of have to go for a force buy. 
I don't want to see them go for the Force Bite. They're working with a solid economy. I think they got $2,900 into that round, so they'll be sitting with full loss bonus coming into the next round. So well, true. I guess with the 650 on top of the 3,400, if he can even find one or two kills with the AK, maybe a bomb plant to be brought in in this round by Sprout, then it shouldn't really be too big of a deal. Yeah. I think most importantly is I don't want to see NATO, uh, NATO Suffix invest in too much because I do want to see him get that up. We've seen them pretty much every round get that outside control quite easily and get down secret. But what I want to see is for them to try and work the opening picks beforehand because they're just walking down into secret and it, it's not like they're trying to fake it or anything. They're being pretty predictable at this point, I would say, is a, yeah. is a way to go about it because Nart have had an idea every single time. They've rotated players straight down. They've, of course, put Valda down to try and hold it. And um, it, it just they haven't been able to get past them quite yet. Although they have been given the map control pretty much, so here we go. Just the AK, some pistols, and Cavalier. NATO Sapex actually does invest quite a, quite a bit behind it. A Deagle and Cavalier to be brought into play. So again, a chance for them to try and bring in damage, which I guess could be still quite effective because the economy of North isn't amazing, but they do have enough money to rebuy in even if they do lose a round, which is unlikely to be this one. In fact, I think they almost have two full buys in in the back pocket. So they'll have to drop over one, but they might not even need to worry about that. Certainly shouldn't have to just now as they find two opening kills. Dennis returns one there on the Deagle. But how much more is going to be done? They need to get a couple kills here just to force the reinvestment from north. And like we said, the bomb plant would be optimal. Dodging the nade there. Spitty tries to get down, but the wall back enough. In. Not spitty enough, indeed. A little bit too slow. Going down, Dennis does a lot of damage onto Valda, but again, they're still not connected. Fav and can't do anything with the AK saved over. Now, 6k in the back pocket, though, for Dennis. He'll be able to drop an op to NATO, and in turn... Oh, okay. Nato's they might not want it. I, I guess Nuka's a map where you don't need the op, kind of, along, at least on the T side, uh, alongside mm. uh, maps like Inferno. But, but it can also be useful. I feel like at this point they may just want to consider it because they have been struggling to find opening picks. Yeah, exactly, right? Uh, sure, it's not always necessary. And a lot of teams don't tend to pull out the AWP on T-Side Inferno. But the thing is, considering that nothing is working right now, that seems to be the one missing piece. Is NATO on the hop? Hold on, Dennis. Creeping around the smoke here. AZ's going to take a peek. Oh, he spots him out and takes him down. Execution style as it's a four versus five. Things ain't looking all too good right now. Spitty's made his way over towards the bomb side, but there's two players there. He can't even look at the right person. They're everywhere. Valda, he's just completely locked that down with a 3k. And as you can see, I don't think Percy was uh, too confident in pushing out there, kind of steading the hoof for a little while. His legs were exposed and he was taken down. 9 to 2 for Nart. Reminder again, of course, this is the map choice of Spro, which um, is not going so well for them so far. Being down 9 to 2 after picking up the pistol round for themselves, of course. They had the 1-0 uh, the lead end up losing against the Force Buy, and since then have only been able to pick themselves up one more round after that. And after that, of course, getting instantly reset. They still have the full loss bonus at least, but only Pistols and Kevlar into this one. It's looking likely that we should see Nort already been able to reach that double digit round scoreline. Well, up against such a weak buy, you'd expect it. AZ's, oh, he's gone out for the repeat. That's so risky. Luckily, they don't, they're not all peeking it at once. If they had rushed him down there, he would have been dropped. I doubt he would have even gotten one kill. Although a couple are picked up for Sprout, it's it's just not enough at this point. Spitty's alone with a deagle and armor. He's trying to get things done. He's caught in the vents. Just absolutely destroyed in there. There's nothing he can do as he tries to get out. Bullets just being spammed away. Gadian rushes in. That's double digits found for North very early on. This is the CT side of Nuke, but this isn't the old Nuke. I don't think uh, two rounds is going to be enough. I don't think two rounds has ever been enough on any map. Mm, but no. we need to see Sprout step it up again. No AWP to come out. They don't have the money to really get it. And so th it just presents a problem now. They're kind of stuck in this in this loop, right? They go for the full buys. North get a read of what they're doing. Or they, they try something different. They try to fast push A. They get shut down. Uh, North just have the right crossfire set up. And that's it. They're reading Sprout perfectly, winning out the aim jewels. Something has to change. And you can see actually this time around Sprout are going to be taking it a little bit slower. It looks like they are actually preparing for a split on towards the A-bomb site right now. You can see of course holding in the lobby, making sure no one gets aggressive, and then also getting that control towards outside, or at least trying to, because we do see actually Kirby being able to open things up. Dennis going to catch him off guard as he was not expecting the second player to be there. Dennis going to be able to follow it up with another on the Valde. But as he pushes in through the smoke, he will be an easy victim for AZ. 
given a chance now for the round to actually be recovered by Nort. And he goes ahead and just pushes in through that A main smoke and catches Spitty off guard. Again, it is going to be Nort sitting within an advantageous position. And Kadian on the up gets absolutely destroyed by Nato Safix. That gives them the opening now that they need. They're going to be able to push down on towards that B-bomb site. The smokes are going to be put in place to try and block off the vision. And as you can see, oh, this could be a problem. Nato Safix is completely open to that bottom door, but a good position from Faven. But the problem is he was exposed to AZ, who was above. It's all on to Nato now. He has to step it up and clutch things out. And as he finds AZ, he brings it down to the one-on-one. -on -one. He has the advantage in terms of the health. And now with the bomb being planted, he will have a, oh, I was going to say an advantage in terms of the positioning as well. And then I noticed that Gade was actually getting the flank, but he somehow spins around and gets the headshot. A third round for Sprout, but only a single player surviving. So, of course, Nort can easily reinvest. Yeah, and that's the problem, right? They've built up such a strong economy at this point. Even losing a round doesn't push them over. Even two rounds won't push them over to an eco. They're good for the rest of the half. And this is the thing for Sprout. If they lose this one, it's almost a 12-3 guarantee for Sprout. Nice nade goes in towards the door, allowing Kadian to get himself a peek. Doesn't spot anybody out just yet, though, so they're going to slow things down on the CT side. No more aggression needed. Scarabee's got the angle. He catches Dennis. Drops a flashbang. He's stuck over towards, over towards Garage now, so th this could present a bit of a problem. Percy's keeping an eye on it. He needs some support to come in. Doesn't happen, so he gets dropped. Oh, Percy almost with a second. But Valda, ever resilient, takes him down. Although the trade goes on the gate, it's still a man advantage for North. As Sprat make their way towards this A bomb site. AZ's just creeping around the smoke, catches the kill, looking for one more, and it's Valda actually found both of those. Never mind. Yeah, AZ with the assist. Gave the assistance. It was Valda from Heaven who rained down hell on them, ironically. As it is going to be 11 to 3. As we said, that instant reset comes in with only a single player surviving in the previous round. And I feel like that's probably the best way it could have went for an to instantly find that reset, go ahead and just shatter the economy of Sprout. And don't really give them give them a chance to, I, I guess, grow their way into this game. Here we go. Let's see. A very weak buy. They get what they can, but it's not great. Mostly pistols. One Mac 10 going to be available. And I'm not sure who that was, but I think that was Nato Safix who was already able to creep his way down on towards the B. Made his way into the vents at least, got down on towards the uh, the secret position. He's yet to actually push out onto the bomb site, but that gives them a bit of a chance because he could maybe try and flank up to ramp room now as his teammates try and push through. But the problem is they do at least uh, have the information that he's been able to get in towards this position. I want to see what... Uh... Never mind. <laughs> Looking at NATO, I was thinking maybe he could have some uh, some decent impact, but never mind. As he gets taken down, they at least get to trade on round. Now looking towards a, a faster play towards B, by the looks of things. First, he's got an AWP, so they can certainly take the ranged battles. Valda has an indication of that, though. He's gone a little bit closer, trying to catch them off. That's a very difficult angle to clear, I suppose, with the AWP, because you're not generally going to check it. But Percy does, as he takes him down, loses a lot of his HP in the process. Yeah, three on four now. It's gonna be a tough retake, but of course not all the weapons are gonna be in the hands of that T side. Instant trades to be found. Nice kill from Gade on the shotgun. I believe that was actually a pretty decent range as well. As we can see, a couple of weak players, one on either side with both Gade and Percy just barely hanging on for life. And that's a big kill from Faven, because now Gade on a shotgun, long range, there was basically nothing that he could do right there. And it will indeed be an 11 to four scoreline at halftime. North, they'll still be pretty happy with that. But there definitely was the chance for a little bit more. I feel like that last round was one they should have been able to pick up. Yeah, for sure. No, there was certainly a lot more potential there, but I think 11 to 4, you can't complain yeah. about that over on your CT side. Now, as they move to the T, all they have to do is come out on top in that pistol, and they're going to be looking very, very much favored to win that out. And Nuke is CT sided, and it can be easy once to kind of snowball once you start to pick up five, six rounds, because then the Ts are going to feel shut out. It's They're trying to innovate on the spot, and if you're shutting down the kind of two, three innovative plays they try, then it starts to get that kind of tilting factor. Looking at Nuke as one of the strong maps for Sprout. This certainly isn't the performance I expected. I was hoping that their T side would be a little bit stronger because that's really where they stand to put North in their place. But now moving over to their CT, I'm not too sure I, I'm I'm believing in the in the Sprout train. It's Nuke. I had to make that I know you I know what you meant, but I had to, I had to yeah. say that. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> no, but yeah, um, 11 for a halftime, definitely not ideal for Sprout. But if they can pick up the pistol, get themselves the first gun round as well, I think that's when we really can see them begin to mount the comeback. But it's going to be a very long road ahead, and it really just starts with this round here and now. If Nark pick this up, they're really just going to continue on with that confidence and also with the momentum that we've seen them build up in that previous half. So a very important round as always, and it looks to be a pretty quick one coming in from Nark. Just going to be a straight charge towards outside. The Glocks up against the USB is at long range isn't ideal. And I was going to say, it looks like they may have been able to pass without taking any casualties, but just towards the end, it will be Gade to actually get dropped. And now Percy, he's in a decent position, faving in towards the vent, going to be able to find one and instantly fall back off to safety. And with that now, it's a five on three, favoring the mostly German side. As they make their way towards the bomb side, is, oh, never mind. I thought Kierby was going to go for the plant behind the silo, but decides not to as Valve goes out for the peak in secret. He gets dropped and so too does AZ Sprout. Winning the pistol is a pivotal move for them. If they lost that, I feel like North would have just kept up the momentum and plowed on through. The question is, are North actually going for a force buy? I think they are. Now, this is interesting. They, did, they didn't get the bomb plant, but even still, full CZs and armor, this is a, a pretty big risk from these guys. I don't... I just don't like seeing the force buys. Even with the old economy, I didn't like seeing the force buys when you had such a massive lead. And especially with how it works now, they could have just taken the one eco boss right into the next round. It would have been still 11 to 6, and they would have had a good opportunity to go ahead and kind of put a stop to any sort of momentum Sprout could have built up. But I guess the thing is, they do want to keep it at least a, a close one right now. They want to keep the economy modest because it's when the economy really gets rolling on the CT side that it can become a proper a map where the CTs can just lock everything down. So trying to make it costly. Not the greatest of starts as Kirby is already, of course, eliminated. It was the opening kill to be found by NATO on the scout towards outside. And with that, it is a five on four. But look at this. Kadian has actually just been able to creep out towards the A-bombs like the CZ in hands. I was going to say not great at that range, but maybe it is in his hands. He makes it work to go ahead and take himself a second kill as well. And suddenly it's a 3v3 with the A-bombs like haven't fallen under control of the T-side. Although Dennis gets one, he won't be able to survive too much longer. It's Valda to return on that one. Yeah, Fathom was low HP there towards Upper. Second kill, of course, onto a full HP Percy. And now as we see things in a two versus two, Bong goes down. And B, they're not yeah, going to realize this, is, this. This is interesting because they still have a player defending A. So as Sprout go in for this retake... They, oh, they know now. They still have to deal with Kadian, though. NATO can't really get down unless he goes towards Ramp. He's trying to get that kill. And he's taken down. Now that's a little bit awkward. Valda holding down all by himself towards the back left corner. Spitty doesn't know that though. It's not planned for him. He needs to take that fight. Spitty's going to go in for the defuse. It's only a fake though. Kadian's going to find that out pretty soon, but he finds the kill. And North come out with the victory. A 4K on Kadian. The CZ proves to be a formidable weapon. And I think the thing with North here is that it's not... It's not really justified to go for that second round buy, the force buy. And I certainly agree with what you're saying about you can go in for the full buy then in round three and then shut them down. I think the thing is, North are just coming in here egoing Sprout. All right? They believe that they're just better players and that they can easily win the rounds. And so far, I think that's uh, two force buys in a row they've won after losing the pistol. On paper, they are definitely the stronger team, but... I do like to see people sometimes play a little bit more safer, but it worked out, of course. But look at this, some damage has actually been done. Spitty on the flank with the CZ, I was going to say, had a great opportunity, but he will actually be taken down. The MP5 just been a little bit too much for him to handle with the aim punch coming in. But look at the health on all three of these players. Now, AZ, Kadian, and Gade, they're all barely hanging on for life. Dennis is pushing aggressive. If he takes down AZ here, that should be a weapon retrieved. But the problem is the bomb already, of course, haven't been planted down on that B-bomb site. And without a defuse kit, they are going to be, of course, working against the time. You know, Safix and Dennis, what can they get done? They don't have Kevlar. They don't have the greatest of weapons. They don't have a defuse kit nor any utility. I, I don't really see many positives here for them, other than the fact that they have been able to find some damage. But at this point in the game, that's just not enough. Yeah, it's really not. North are just too far ahead for damage to matter. NATO gets dropped as well, leaving only Dennis to save the AK-47. He should be able to carry that forward and taking a look at the economy, that's very much necessary because Sprout are going to have practically nothing to work with coming into the next round. 2k on the board for most players. You can't really get a buy with that. If they want to go for the pistols... I don't know. I don't want to see that. I don't want to see pistols coming out outside of what they can afford to buy and indeed, uh, Dennis drops over a Deagle to Favin, and that's it. 
Everybody else going to be sitting on the USPs, except for Dennis, of course, who has the AK and the Deagle safe from the previous round. Deagle on Pavin, like I said. North, oh my god, they're stampeding towards B. Spitty's running away. Can he outrun the horde, though? That's the question. As Kadian comes in with an MP5. Whoa, that was a trippy little spin, but eventually takes Spitty down. Smoke towards the door. I think that's two smokes. Bit of a misplay, but that's all right. Plenty of smokes to go around. As this should be a pretty difficult retake now for Spread, only really Dennis and the AK to worry, worry about. It. No longer, because AZ just went ahead and said it's too AZ. <laughs> God damn it. I'm these just going to continue on with a really bad play these words, by the way. Puns are That's killing my me. thing. That's the whole point, Mitch. Well, here we go. Nice shot from Faven on the dig, but he is going to be limited to just the one as he is going to be finished off. Again, though, they do bring a lot of players down to very low health, having a majority of pistols. Sadly, not been able to find any more kills to actually drop the weapons and make it a costly round and force reinvestment, so it's not really too much of a problem for an art day, but they would quite easily get everything back in play. Gabe's going to stick on the MP5, though, surprisingly, but I guess the positive is to have a look over at the Sprout Boy. They don't have a single player with a helmet, meaning that SMG will still be extremely useful and this is potentially the last buy now that we're going to see from Sprout. And I think this is the first time NATO Sapphics has had an off yeah. this entire map. I definitely I, I definitely also share that sentiment. I don't recall seeing him with an AWP before. 11 kills on the board. Generally, he's going to be towards the, the top of the scoreboard when he gets that off out. But North have been managing their economy pretty well at this point, forcing them into force buys again and again and always doing the damage in the rounds that they lose. It forces Sprout into a negative position, a deficit of economy in a lot of these rounds. Spitty taking the long range fight there with the AUG. There's a second kill on the board. All right, Sprout. Now we're looking a little bit better. Molotov forces him out, but he moves preemptively and relocates over towards the top of the boxes, choosing not to take the fight as his teammate Dennis falls, knowing that he's the only thing that sits between Sprout and the lack of a man advantage. North have taken control of ramp now, though, so they can go towards A if they wish. Through heaven, they've got to worry about NATO, but he doesn't hit the op shot. Now he's in a lot of trouble. Low HP. Kadian is staring up at that kill hole. NATO's in a lot of danger if he goes in for this peak. And he's going to be slowly pushed down by Kirby as well. Just trapped at the moment. Oh, Kadian getting a little bit close there on the spam. That could have been dangerous. If only he had a nade. That would have been perfect to draw up right now. Ooh, that Molotov from Valde could be useful as well to force the player on the bomb site into the open. I believe that is Favin. He could be in for a little bit of trouble as the rap is going to be coming in from heaven already. Kirby picking up one. Valde going to be able to chime in as well. And with that note, the round is beginning to fall apart. It's Percy who's looking to at least just try and stay alive. But the problem is, it's three on two. Barely any health left on the remaining players for Sprout. And it looks like we are going to see map point being found in favor of Nort. As Spitty doesn't really have many options here. He's just going to have to go ahead and try and save the Og pretty much. And even then, I don't know if that's going to be allowed as he has now been spotted. And finished off by Kirby. 15 to 5. Nort coming into the map choice of Sprout. Just completely decimating them. Is really the only way to put it. Runs into this. Spitty below Fitty HP was an easy kill at the end. One round needed for North. Anyway, would it? <laughs> One round needed. AKs all around. They're looking for the faster play with utility as well in their back pocket or their utility belt. Yeah, it's, it's not a great buy at all for Sparrow right now. It's mostly SMGs, and as you can see, Nark known they're picking a bit of a weaker investment. Go for a very quick A play, but actually Faven able to step it up and get a quick double kill for himself. And with that, I think Nark now beginning to kind of shy away from this initial A push, going to be dropping down towards the vent. Although with another kill being found, it's suddenly all on the Cadian and Valde. Valde having a great game so far, of course, as you can see on your screen right now, sitting at 21 kills and 8 deaths. Kadian having a lot of impact as well on some rounds, such as the 4k he got with that CZ. But I think a 2 on 5 may be just a little bit too much to ask of them. So Sprout now looking to try and gather themselves some form of a lifeline. Let's see if that's going to be allowed. If Nort can at least get a couple of kills out of this one and force the reinvestment to have to come out, that would be putting them in a pretty solid position. The North will have the money no matter what to play around with. Kadian left alive. Nerfs are going to be taken down. I mean, at this point, it's... It's kind of interesting, the, uh, the dynamic over on the north side. And AZ sitting on 23 kills, 21 for Valda. And Gade on 16. 22, no, actually. Or 22, sorry. I was looking at a HLTV scoreboard, so it's a little bit behind. Mm -hmm. So Gade on, a, on 16, so they're actually above. Just 
three players in the north side above the top kills for Sprout. It's just the, the fragment potential right now is just huge. But north, NATO caught in the open, taken down AZ as well. One on to Dennis. He's on 24 kills now. Eventually going to be eliminated by Percy, but the man advantage sits with... No! God, what was that, Kirby? Misses a whole half a magazine of an AK. I think he tried to hit him with the gun at the end. He was spinning it so quickly. Yeah, Kirby always known known to have a little bit of a shaky spray. <laughs> you can say that again. Bomb goes down, though. So North's still in the positive position with Gate up close. He could catch a few of them off guard. Yeah, it definitely is a chance for him to do so. Does have to be cautious, though, of course, because even after he finds one, everyone's going to be focused on it. But then again, Valda in a solid position to be ready to just peek out and at least ensure some trades will be found off the back of that. So, yeah, very difficult retake right now. Going to have to try and come in from Sprout. Valda already able to find one. He goes ahead and actually doubles down before Gade chimes in and Kadian and Valda go ahead and actually finish themselves off, I believe that was, <laughs> just for the laugh. Just, just for a little bit of fun. But yeah, a very convincing victory coming in right there from Nort. Able to go ahead and, as I said before, decimate Sprout on their own map choice. And that really worries me now heading onto Inferno, which is the map that we were saying would be a little bit more of an easier victory for Nort. We said they'd be favored no matter what coming into this, yeah. but we said Nuke was the one where we saw Sprout having a chance and it didn't look like they had a chance throughout that entire map. No, it, it really didn't. There wasn't a, a single moment after the pistol round where you thought, hey, Sprout can do this. Uh, North just consistently locking them out of rounds. And I'm, I'm a, little bit, a little bit disappointed to see it going so one-sided. I mean, it doesn't set a good tone for Inferno. But like we said before, Inferno is probably a map that Sprout would have expected to come out in this matchup. So perhaps they'll have the uh, preparation done to take North down. But we're going to be finding out if that's the case within the next couple of minutes. Before that, we've got to take a quick break. So join us back here in probably about 10 minutes for the next map.